guys. Um, now let me show you how to deal with multi-track files because that's a little bit different. Um, when you're recording and fixing real drums with uh, lots of different microphones, you have to deal with phase, right? Yeah, right, the timing relationship between the drums and the microphones yeah, are exactly. going to be different. So normally when we edit drums and protos, we used to use that beat detective and cut it up into lots of little slices. Not so anymore, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some drums from the original session. Let's take a listen to these. Now this is a perfect two-bar loop from the drummer. Okay, I'm actually going to use this one instead. Now, if we zoom in, you can see that his first initial uh, transient is quite a ways off of the beat. He's 196, he's off. If we go to the end, He's finishing way before bar 200, but that doesn't matter because all I'm going to do is just separate that region and use my elastic properties to say, hey, these two bars, these, uh, this phrase is actually four bars long, so I'm just going to round it up to four bars and put it into a region group. And I'm going to call this uh, AES drums. There we go. I've got a little drum fill over here. Let's take a listen to that. That's just a two bar, uh, a two beat loop, so I'm separating it, round it up to two beats, and I'll wrap that up into a region group, and I'll just call it fill. So now I'm going to go back to my down beat, here we go, and I'm going to drag in the AES drums, just drop them, oops, I'm still in shuffle mode, let's go to grid mode, I'm going to drag that in right over here, and I'm going to ungroup it so you can see what's happening, and I'm going to view the beat markers, you can do this right over here, see we're in warp mode, waveform warp analysis. And if we zoom in a little bit, you can see these transients, that's the phase. You see how staggered they are? That's the phasing of the microphone. And that's what we need to maintain when we make edits to a drum track. So for example, if I wanted to just grab this snare drum and move it anywhere for a correction of timing, I can either do it in free time or snap it straight to the grid like so. And I can also take this one, move that over there, take that one and move that over there. I'm just going to grab a hi-hat and bring that in. Let's take a listen to that. And Thanks. if we take a look at this, you can see that that phase relationship, even though I've corrected it right on the beat, has kept that phase sound. So we haven't collapsed our stereo image. In fact, even even if I move this back, okay, and just there and there, and bring up my hard quantize and say, hey, I want to quantize it hard to 16th note. Everything shifts, but my phase is kept intact. And go back to the waveform and come over here and grab that fill. Again, I'll just ungroup it so you can see it. There's the beat markers. We just quantize it like so. On the hi hat, again, there's my warp markers. I'm going to quantize those like so, and I'm just going to slip it off the grid to give me a sort of on the hi-hat, there we go, so one command, like so, let's come up, go back to waveform view and take a listen, in fact what I'm going to do is just duplicate, I'll wrap all of this up into one new region group, like so, duplicate, duplicate, and duplicate again, so uh, let's take a listen. So Gary, can you make these drums slam for me? Yeah. Okay, and while he does that, I'm going to finish some editing. All right. 